Hi, it's Sandy from Quilters Attic Sewing Center in Pine Bush, New York. Today I wanted to go over a quick and easy pattern to make a fully lined scrub cap. We've got the directions and the templates on our website at quiltersattic.com. They're right on the homepage right now. So this is just the cover of the pattern. This is what you'll look for on the website. Again, it's quiltersattic.com. Okay. Um, the scrub cap is very easy. It can be made from either one or two fabrics. So this one here was made with two fabrics. So you've got the, the sides here, and then you've got the top, and you can see it's got ties in the back to tie it on. Everything is fully lined inside and out. So it's washable and it's, it's very durable. Okay, so you can choose to make it out of one fabric or two. And on our website, again, quiltersattic.com, we've got the um, pattern pieces. Now the pieces are larger than a piece of paper, so you will have to piece them together. And we've got some lines here showing where to tape them together to line them up. So this is a, a nice, fun, quick project. You're gonna end up with three pieces of fabric, the top, which is the outer and the inner piece, and then the side is just one piece, the side and the tie is all one piece. So it goes together real nice and easy. You can have this done in no time. Probably once you get it cut out, it's about 20 minutes start to finish with the sewing. As I said a few minutes ago, these patterns are larger than a piece of paper. So I went ahead and on the first piece, I have a green line right here. And then on the next piece, so that's A1, A2 is going to line up to it. But to get it perfectly lined, I want you to go ahead and line up this green line exactly over top of that green line and tape it. Okay. And then at the very end here, you're going to cut out this little A3 piece and line up this blue line over top of that blue line and tape it. Now this works out to be about 21, 22 inches. Okay, so when that's all put together, we're ready to go ahead and lay out the pattern onto the fabric. Okay, you notice on the pattern that it does say fold and fold. That's not quite normal that we put th something on two folds, but we are going to do that for this. So if you have a half a yard of fabric, you're going to have that laid out. You're going to go ahead and fold that. So there's approximately seven inches here, and that way our pattern will fit on it. So the pattern will go against this fold as well as this one. So when we open this up, it's going to be twice as wide, twice as long. Okay, so once that's laid out, lay your pattern on top of it. I'm gonna remove this because I've already done that. I've got my pattern wonder clipped on the side here. So th these are all uh, clipped in place along a fold. These are also clipped along a fold. And then on the um, edge where I was cutting, I went ahead and put a few straight pins. Okay, so once you've got that all laid out, you can go ahead with a pair of nice big sharp scissors cut here, or I just went ahead and used my rotary cutter. I did that before we started, so voila, it's done. Okay, so you're going to do that with uh, piece A, which is the sides. And then piece B is very simple. You're just going to lay out your piece of fabric, make sure it's doubled so we're cutting two at once. Put that on, pin it, and cut all the way around. And then you'll end up with a scrub cap top, an inside and an outside. You could do this in two different fabrics if you want. I went ahead and just did it in one so it was nice and simple. Okay, so that is all of the cutting. You're just cutting that. And if you notice it says, um, three inches. Make sure when you print, you do not fit to page. You printed the actual size. <clears throat> and when you print it out, make sure to take a ruler and measure that that is in fact three inches. Okay. Once everything's cut, you can go ahead and remove the pattern. So take away all your clips, all your pins. If this is wrinkled and you want to go ahead and press it, now is the time to do that. And before I go on, I just want to say, sometimes the fabric isn't quite as wide as the pattern. That's okay, you'll notice here it was a little shorter. So when I slide this pattern away, you see it's a little shorter. That's fine, just trim it nice and even. This is just going to make your uh, ties be a smidge shorter. So it's really not a big deal. Don't stress, we don't stress, this is our hobby. Okay, so remove your pattern. Both patterns, all the pins are gone. I'm gonna get rid of my extra fabric. We don't need that anymore. So now we're left with this piece. We're going to open that up. Now that all our pattern pieces have been cut out, we are ready to begin sewing. 
you're gonna go ahead and take the the um, the top which goes on top of the head you're gonna put it right sides together and we are going to sew across this short little straight edge now I'm working on the baby lock Altair and I just want to show you a couple cool features so if you get up real close you can see I haven't threaded my needle yet I'm gonna push this little magic threading button on the side of the machine here just like that your needles threaded okay and another feature I really like is over on the screen right here this picture of the little presser foot I'm gonna to touch that every time I stop sewing the needle is going to go down and the foot's gonna pop up which is great when I'm going around turns okay so I did just go ahead and sew that um, now you're going to turn it right side out and this is a batik so it looks pretty much the same but we're going to turn it right side out and get that pressed now I did all this a moment ago. Okay, so now that it's pressed, we're going to go ahead and top stitch that short edge with the nice um, narrow top stitch, and then we're going to baste all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and put a few pins just so the edges don't shift as I'm sewing. Now normally I would put a pin every couple of inches, but for time's sake I'm just going to put about five pins in here. So we've got just some pins, woo, pins around the edges. And first I'm gonna do that top stitch at the bottom. And once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and lengthen my stitch length. And then I'm going to go all the way around the edge just to base those two top pieces. You want to do this a little less than a quarter of an inch so as you're sewing the whole thing together those stitches won't show. So if you can see where, from where you're sitting you might not be able to. This foot hopped up a little bit so now I can go ahead and remove my pin. I can pivot if I need to. I'm just basting very, very close to the edge so that will all get hidden in my seam allowance later. If you don't want to sew over the pins, go ahead and remove them as you go. When you finish that, remember to shorten your stitch length back to the normal length. Now I'm sewing this at a 2.5, so I went back to my normal length. I've basted around the edges, so this is now one piece. It's not going to move on me. And now I'm ready to sew the top to the sides. I want you to find the center of the, the top here, so just fold this in half and put a pin right up in the top center. So I just kind of pinched it, gave it a little crease, and now I know exactly where to put my pin so it is centered. I am going to do that with the side pieces as well. So the side piece was pretty large. Go ahead and fold that in half. So it looks kind of like this. And then put a pin in both sides, which I have done already. Okay. Now you're gonna go ahead and open this back up. And remember, this is all in the printed directions at quiltersattic.com. And everything has lots of pictures, so it should be nice and easy. Now I have this one pin here. I am going to take my top piece line up that pin and then I'm going to sandwich this in between the sides so I'm taking this other pin down here folding it up so all my pins match up here I'm going to lay this flat on the table for a moment put one pin through all the layers so it doesn't so nothing shifts as I begin to sew
Okay, so I've lined up those three center pins, the two from the side fabric and the one that's in the top piece. Lined them all up, then I put one pin through the whole thing, so now this is all put together. That is the only pinning you're going to do right now. Okay, We're going to sew with a quarter inch seam. We're gonna start right in the center here. And then you're gonna take a couple of stitches to lock it in place. And then as we go, this is like putting a sleeve in or easing something, we're gonna keep turning this head to line up with the edge as we sew. So I'm gonna bring the camera a little closer to the machine and we're gonna sew down this one side all the way and then we're gonna come across the end here, okay? When we go to do the next side, we're going to sew all the way down, easing that top piece in around the curve. When we get to the straightaway at the end here, we're gonna leave an opening to turn this. So we're gonna to sew to about here, leave an opening, and then come back and finish sewing the end, and then down. That will leave a couple inch opening that we can go ahead and turn this whole thing right side out and call it a day. Okay, so I'm gonna bring again, bring the camera a little closer. We're gonna start sewing where those pins are and all the way around the curve and then down. So let's go ahead and scoot the camera right up close. So again, I'm gonna start sewing where those pins are. I don't wanna sew over the pins, so I'm gonna put my needle um, just beyond those pins. Just take a stitch or two forward and backward to lock it in. We don't want this to come undone as we're working. Now, this is gonna be a slow process because I have to make sure this top piece is caught up to the edge. Okay, and that's one reason I used a different color fabric is so you really could see that. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull that edge a little bit, fold this back down, take a couple of stitches, open it back up, and I'm just gonna keep pulling. I don't recommend pinning this, because you will have a very difficult time getting this all pinned. You see, very slow, I'm just a couple stitches at a time, and that's why you, if you have a machine where the presser foot raises, you can see this foot is raising up a little bit, so I can pivot, I can do what I need to get around those turns, and it also makes it so I can move my fabric very easily without having to lift anything. So this is kind of hands-free with the machine, I'm just worrying about the fabric now. You know, uh, I'm a quilter, so in quilts, I try to make everything as perfect as possible. I've been known to rip a seam or two, but with this, it is not nearly as precise. So don't make yourself too crazy. Just keep a couple stitches at a time. And not sure if you can see all this, but this is kind of getting puckered up in the back. That is normal. Okay, so don't make yourself crazy. Pull this around, a couple more stitches. The very beginning is the hardest. As you get closer to the edge, it straightens out a little bit. But it's still not perfect. So we're getting there, almost there. Almost there. Now, one thing I did forget to tell you as you're cutting out your pattern pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a pattern piece. On that pattern piece, there was a little black notch on the big piece. When this is pinned to your pattern, go ahead and put a little snip in your fabric, very shallow snip, but something that you can see. And as you're sewing this in, the, the, the top here, this my purple color, that should line up pretty much to your snip, and mine looks like it does. Okay, so I'm gonna go sew to the edge of my snip there, the edge of my top. I'm gonna do a little back stitching just so that is nice and secure. And now I am gonna continue sewing all the way to the end of my side piece. Line up those edges. We're going around curves, so a couple stitches, let your foot come up and then you're going to pivot. And now 
to run a straightaway. We can zip down. And pivot and come all the way down the short edge. And again, make sure you do some back stitching. So half of this has been sewn. At the very edges here, we're gonna go ahead and clip off these little corners, get rid of the little dog ears. That'll make it a little easier to turn later on, get nice sharp points. Okay. So if you were to lay this flat, it's not gonna look so good. That's okay. okay. So now that this side is sewn, we have to go ahead and sew this side. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and start back in the center there. And we're going to continue doing the same thing. But as we pull now, we're pulling not just the top piece, but this whole other side that's been sewn is going to be pulling. So we're going to fight just a little bit more, but that's okay. I want to start back over top of the stitches that I did earlier, just to lock it in. A couple stitches over top. And then before I get to these pins, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of them. So no more pins. Again, I'm just pulling this top piece, a couple, couple stitches at a time, making sure all three layers are lined up. So pull that head a little bit, that top piece. Couple stitches, and then you're going to continue doing this until we get the entire top piece stitched in and you can see there's a little more pulling on this side the first side goes pretty easily see the back here look how bunchy that is that is correct don't panic and think you've done something wrong we're sewing this top piece was kind of circular so we're really fighting here to get that to lie straight and flat for us but we are so close to done If you try to smooth too much of that top piece at once, you're going to end up with some puckers. So it's better just to pull a little bit at a time. So four or five stitches. Stop and then keep doing it because this at the end is getting really bunchy. stretch here another inch or so all right so again this top piece top of the head should line up to those little uh, notches I cut earlier and it looks like I'm pretty good I'm to the edge of the top piece that sandwiched in between there you can't see it but I am going to go ahead and do a little back stitching to secure that. Okay, now I'm going to come around this turn a little bit. opening around a turn 
because it's a little harder to close that up later on. So we've gotten around the turn. We're kind of on the straightaway now. So I'm going to go ahead and do a back stitch. Cut my thread. I want to leave about a three inch opening, so a little gap here, and I'm going to come back and now I'm going to resume sewing. So put my presser foot back down. Again, sew a few stitches forward, a few stitches backwards, and then come right to the edge. And we're going to turn the corner. I always like to do a few back stitches in my corners. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and cut. Before we do anything else, we're going to trim the corners here. Get rid of a little bulk. So those are our corner. Don't trim your sewing line, of course. Okay, but that is all the sewing we're going to do for now. I'm going to push this camera back out. And this is what it looks like. How'd we do? All right, looks pretty good so far. We're gonna go ahead and turn this right side out. Now we're turning this entire thing through this little itty bitty hole right here. So if you have a fast turn or some kind of turning tool, it works really well. It's a tube and this is the number six size. These are uh, purchasable on our website at quiltersaddict.com. If you don't have one, they really are great. Um, this is gonna go through and then we slide this little wire in. There's a little corkscrew on the end. We twist it and then pull everything back through. So I'm going to go ahead and find the opening in my scrub cap. I'm sliding it in. I'm sliding it all the way down until I get to the other piece here. Just want to twist all up on me, but that's okay. We're all the way to the other end. So now the entire scrub cap is on my fast turn tube. Go ahead and slide the wire in. When you get to the end, you're going to twist it. And you probably can't see, but it did just poke through the other side. Okay, now just slowly pull. Whoops, I let it down. Don't do that. I want to make sure you can see everything. Okay, so it's through the end again. I'm just, again, slowly pulling. And once something comes out of the other side, then we just start pulling on that. We're just kind of turning it off the tube here. And now we can just start pulling slowly. We have a small opening and there's a lot of fabric. Get rid of this tube now. Oh, that's turned already. So again, just slowly, slowly pull. This to me is the worst part. You know, you don't wanna tear anything, so just, just kinda pull. I may have made my opening just a hair too small because I am struggling a bit here. But these few minutes of struggle are nice, better than having to leave a big opening in the head and in the top piece and sew around the corner, you know, sew a curve. Goodness, I didn't struggle nearly as much on the last few. Almost done. There we 
we go. Just needed a little, little encouragement. Okay, so this is basically what it's going to look like, a little messy at the moment. You want to go ahead and poke your corners out. So if you have something with a sharp point, there's a couple different point turners, but that's going to take this edge, poke that out. See, turning really is a bit of a pain, but it didn't take too long. Okay, now we're going to stick the point turner all the way to the other side, all the way around, and we're going to poke out the other corner. Now the newer point turners are a couple inches longer, which makes it helpful. I really should get one of them. But we're getting there, we're getting there. And then this edge, we're going to kind of poke so that straightens out a bit. So now all this needs is a good press. I'm gonna go ahead and press all the edges. And then you're gonna press this in and sew up this little seam. Now, as I sewed, I'm gonna find my other one back here. I pressed all the way. I didn't just sew up the opening. I did about an eighth of an inch seam allowance and it's a little hard to see because I do have matching thread, but I went all the way up, press the top, all the way around the whole front of this. And then I finished back in here. So I did go all the way around and in that, it did go ahead and um, close up the opening. So once it's pressed, it looks much nicer. This, you can go ahead and, I'm not really a hat person here, but this just goes right on your head. Fold it up for as short as you are and go ahead and tie it in the back. Okay, so there it is. I'd have my hair pulled back, but scrub cap, fully lined and ready to go. So again, it's fully lined. You have no exposed seams, so this will wash and dry real easy. Thanks for watching. Again, the videos are at quiltersattic.com, the video um, that you have now, but, but the pattern and all the written directions. Okay, so good luck, have fun, and happy sewing.